Well, hello there. It's Friday, not Wednesday, and it is the 22nd, and uh, I am here today with you. As uh, I was out of town on Tuesday and Wednesday at a conference, and uh, just good to be back with you guys. And we're going to be looking at Luke today, 23 and verse 43, I believe it is. Let me see. Yep, 43, uh, where Jesus has a conversation with uh, the thief on the cross. It's relatively short, but it has a huge uh, impact upon his life and uh, certainly something for us to consider as well. Uh, glad to have you along here today as you're able to uh, join us, whether it's live now or later on. You know, even if it's a week down the road, uh, just glad to have you. Thank you for stopping in and checking out Monel's devotions. And uh, the pastors and myself uh, appreciate, again, your support and your comments. And uh, just glad to be part of this ministry of what we got going on here today. So we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus again, as I say, as he was upon the cross and his conversation with the thief. And uh, we'll get into more detail as we go along on that. But uh, would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for your love, your grace, and mercy. And Lord, as we are going through this Lenten season, uh, your love is so evident as you continue, Father, to pour out that grace and that mercy upon us, though we don't deserve it. And you are ever kind to us, giving your Son to die for us, to go through all of that agony and that pain and that suffering, that our sins would be forgiven. And then, Lord, bringing us to faith and bringing and sustaining that faith uh, throughout our life. May you continue to watch over and bless us and may we continue to be the light and the salt in this world as we share Jesus. May these things be so in his most holy and precious name. Amen. And again, looking at Luke uh, 23, verse 43, uh, Jesus has been uh, crucified. He's on the cross. A lot of uh, insults and everything are already pouring out his way, along with the agony of what he endured upon the uh, before he got even to the cross with the agony of... Uh, uh, the, the lashing and the flogging that he uh, went through, um, that would have been a huge uh, event and very, very painful. And the Bible tells us that he didn't open his mouth. Uh, I, I, no cursing, no, no nothing, just uh, taking that punishment and enduring its pain. Uh, and he was doing it again for us. The Bible tells us that through his, uh, you know, through his wounds, through his stripes, we are healed. And uh, receiving that forgiveness, uh, again, which is being accomplished for us upon the cross. Uh, we're going to look at the, uh, the words that Jesus says uh, in a little more detail. He's, uh, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Now this, he says to the thief on the cross, and Luke doesn't record this aspect of it, but Matthew and Mark record for us that indeed both of the thieves were mocking Jesus and hurling insults at him. But at some point, the one thief... Uh, recognizes something, uh, the Holy Spirit, even at work uh, in this moment, not just upon this thief, but upon both. I'm convinced of it because God wants all people to be saved. And we see here the Holy Spirit bringing this person to faith. And part of that would have been watching how Jesus was enduring this uh, entire treatment. Right? Maybe he didn't see the, the beating that Jesus got, but he certainly saw the aftermath of it. He saw the effect of it upon his body, and he was watching how um, the guards were treating him and hurling insults and, and uh, abusing him and kicking him and all the other stuff and uh, all the people around that were just jeering Jesus and, and just mocking him and saying all kinds of uh, insult, uh, insulting things to uh, our Lord and Savior. And then how did Jesus respond with, to that? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you know, it's recorded a couple of times in the scriptures. But as my understanding is, this was something he said often while he was there. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as the thief is watching this, and he comes to a sudden realization by the power of the Holy Spirit that there is something different about this other person that's being nailed to him, as he watches himself and his actions and the actions of the other thief. And to see a, a, a stark contrast between the demeanor of Jesus as he's hanging there on that cross, going through all that he is. And the Spirit brings him to faith. And he makes profession of that faith by reminding the other, thing, hey, we're getting what we deserve, but this man is innocent. And then looking at Jesus and, and, and Jesus saying, or saying to Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. And then Jesus says those wonderful words to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. 
And uh, the thing that I want to draw out here for just a moment is the heart of Jesus, his, his thinking. It's, it's not about the suffering and the pain that he's going through. It's really about what he's doing it for and who he's doing it for. And a good example of that is the person next to him. And uh, rather than you know lashing out at him and saying, well, what were you doing just moments ago? He, he, he loves this person next to him. He loves this, this thief on the cross. And he is there filled with compassion and empathy in the midst of his own pain and suffering, and suffering beyond what you and I can probably even comprehend. Uh, not just the physical agony, but the spiritual agony. I think that was probably of all the suffering that Jesus went through when the Father deserted him and broke that relationship, and it was something tangible within Jesus, something that he could feel. Um, and I liken it to being ripped in half, uh, you know, and yet still being alive. Yeah, and that would have been what the agony level would have been for Jesus. And he's still reaching out with compassion to this thief on a cross. He reaches out with compassion to his mom uh, and, and, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Of course, that's the, the John, right? Very, very humble in his assessment, uh, not wanting to put his name there, but, uh, but still identifying. Uh, and so if we look at this, right, we see the heart not only of Jesus, but the heart of the Father who puts his son through all of this agony and all of this pain and suffering so that we can be with him in for eternity. Now, there's some question about what does that mean? Today will be with me in paradise. Because later on, Jesus uh, talks to, uh, I believe it's Martha, and says, don't hold on to me, I haven't ascended to the Father yet. Uh, you know, so they're talking, you know, does that mean that, uh, that this paradise is a place separate from heaven? Well, you know, that's one of those questions we may not answer, and I wanted to approach it here uh, because it is uh, on the hearts and minds of some people. You know, is there a contradiction here? And the answer is a solid no, because there are no contradictions in Scripture. Uh, there's a lot of things that are now and not yet. Uh, the Scripture talks in Revelations about those that are, you know, living uh, in the presence of God. Uh, we, we see Enoch who walked with God and was not, right, taken up into heaven, the Scriptures tell us. Uh, we also have Elijah who was taken up in the chariot up into heaven. I think that there's some things that we can know about this that is that we can't really know, right? Uh, we don't know the full extent of what's going on the other side of eternity, and we won't know until we get there. Uh, but, but I would say that certainly there is no contradiction in what Jesus says. That when he says, today you'll be with me in paradise, that that's exactly what he means. Now what's that layout of paradise? I can't tell you. But uh, I do know that it's something that's very wonderful. It may even be something as simple as this right here. Let me just transition here. Uh, this may be the idea of paradise, right? Uh, just a, a beautiful garden area where people are and exist uh, before the resurrection. Uh, again, we don't know. Uh, there are so many things in the scriptures that we do know, but there are a few that we don't. And the whole ex uh, experience of the person who dies, uh, do they go into a soul sleep or those kind of things? Uh, we can get caught up in all that stuff. I think, and I take Jesus at his word, that that day the thief was with Jesus in paradise. And he was aware of his surroundings. Uh, I also go to the transfiguration, right? When we have Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Uh, and, and coming back in a sense, sorry about that, my light just kicked off up there. Uh, quick, quick adjustment for the camera. <clears throat> but anyway, as we look at uh, that situation, um, I, I still think that it speaks to something that happened in that day, at, that when the, uh, the thief died, that he was taken to paradise. The other thief, uh, when we read in Peter that Jesus descended to speak to the spirits kept in prison there, that uh, while not in official hell, um, they are kept in a prison that's dark, and uh, I believe that that's where he went. Uh, we get all kinds of different things as we look at the scriptures, and there seem to be contradictions. But if we do some deep study into them, we find that there aren't any at all. Uh, sometimes we just want to take an isolated event and make it all that there is in the scriptures and start to find some difficulties, when if we look at all the scriptures, those difficulties tend to disappear. And in the ones that they don't, we still trust God. We trust him. Uh, that he's got everything under control, and he will bring us through it. Now, getting back to the heart of the issue, and that is the heart of Jesus. I mean, think about all that he's going through. And now, I mean, in this moment of pain and suffering, he's still thinking about others. And that is the compassion and the love and the dedication and commitment that Jesus has, not only to them, but to you and to me. 
We can draw on that. We can gain an understanding of the depth of God's love. When we look at just this one moment on the cross, in the midst of all that pain and suffering, and Jesus uh, doesn't stay silent, he isn't just brooding over there, but he is actively seeking people that can be brought to salvation. Even the things that he had said prior to his crucifixion um, were all geared towards helping people understand who he was, or the things that he didn't say when he didn't respond to the, uh, the beatings and the, uh, uh, all the abuse that he took with cursing and all the other stuff. It just shows that Jesus is working hard to bring people to salvation. And we see it here again, that even in these last moments, this thief is brought into eternal life. And again, it's the work of the Holy Spirit too. So we see again, as always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always working together you know, in, in unity, in bringing people to salvation. And that is our God. That is the great love he has and that's what we're going to kind of end with as we continue to go on. I do want to point out one other thing here. So give me just another second here and see if I can get this going here. And I want to bring this up too. And that is that is, and this is supposed to be the cross coming up out of the manger, that we uh, celebrated Christmas and now here we are in the Lenten season and a week from today will be a Good Friday. But that is all part of the Christmas gift, that when Jesus came into this world as that tiny baby, he came into this world for this purpose, to die on the cross, that we would have salvation. And of course, the empty tomb lies just the other side of that, but we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But I just want to remind you that the greatest Christmas gift ever is Good Friday and then Easter Sunday, as our sins are paid for and as our Lord is raised back to life and claiming victory. And so when you celebrate Christmas, think about Good Friday uh, and just a reminder of why Jesus did come into this world. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I'll see if I can get there. I know I've got Carol, good to see you, and Karen and Lois. I'm going kind of backwards here. Uh, Sally, Sandy, good to see you joining us there. And Ruth Ann and Jim, good to see you. And uh, what, Diane and Fred, hey, Fred, good to see you. And Carrie. Good to see you as well, and uh, Joan and Toddy and Dave, good to see you all there. So thank you all for stopping in today. Uh, just hope that you have a very blessed week. And uh, next uh, week we have Holy Week. Uh, we start off with Palm Sunday with our normal uh, uh, traditional services at uh, 8, 9, and then 1030. And then we go into Holy Week from that point on with our Thursday night uh service and then we have good friday services and then easter sunday services and i don't have those all in front of me to rattle them off for you but if you check our calendar you can find them all and we also have the cards that postcards that were uh, on the uh, education center and uh, i should say the desk uh, the welcoming desk there we go i'll get it right here in a minute and uh, you can pick one up of those cards there too and have those dates and times all available so again, God's peace be with you, and thank you for sharing some time with me. Have a very wonderful day. God's peace.